how much does a sophisticated note investor want to make? Stay tuned. Welcome to this week's edition of Note School TV, where every Wednesday at 11.05 Central Time, we bring you the most amazing guests, as well as the most amazing content. And well, you know, as you've come to expect, we have the most amazing guest today, and we'll bring her on in just a minute. Before we do, uh, let's take care of some little bit of business here. So number one, make sure and like this episode. Boom, just go ahead and hit that like. Share it with your friends, right? Your friends, you know, they, they're they interested in what you're doing, or if you want to get them more interested in what you're doing, then certainly share these episodes with them. And uh, number two, if you haven't already subscribed to our Note School TV channel, make sure and go ahead and do that. And number three, hit that bell notification. Bing, so that, uh, well, you'll know when we're about to go live every Wednesday at 11.05. Also, uh, if you'd like to know more about what we do at Note School, just simply go to noteschool.com forward slash TV. Again, noteschool.com forward slash TV. And guys, please continue to send in your comments, your your thoughts, what's happening in your market. Uh, Eddie and I love to, to read those and peruse those. So yes, when you send them, we certainly do pay attention. So make sure and send those in. With that, uh, I want to bring on Note School's founder, uh, our chief visionary officer, all around good guy, my friend, Mr. Eddie Speed. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. How's it going? It is going and fast. It is going and fast. It sure is. It is. Yeah. Uh, it's an amazing time, really. We we started this momentum, you know, last fall, and it is just full speed ahead. Yeah, um, we're very excited about the market. Um, we we are in what we call a note cycle. Uh, there are rental cycles in the industry and there's note cycles in the industry. And we'll we'll discuss that with our in, uh, investor guest today who has really mastered this very well. Uh, and so, uh, Joe, let's talk about the news because returns are in the news. They are. So, uh, Eddie, I found this uh, just a day or so ago, and it is talking about family offices. And family offices are looking, um, they're looking beyond the stock market for higher, safer returns. So 46% of family offices, and by the way, a family office, you know, I know this is a big number, family officers starts at about, uh, about $50 million and goes up from there. And some people already are like, oh my God, well, I don't have nearly that. Let me tell you something. When we look at the returns they're looking for, this is what you know the the top investors are looking at and for. So, um, alternative investments include private equity, real estate, venture capital, and I like this one, Eddie. Private credit. That's what we do. Private yeah. credit. Private credit. And again, here's the here's the key from all of that. Multi-family or mul most family offices, sorry about that, have a target return. The median return is eight percent. And um, Eddie, I think that tells a lot, especially when we're going to talk today about about returns. I think that's what people are looking not for just ridiculous, crazy returns, but something that is that is uh, strong and steady. That's it. We're going to we're going to have an expert on here today. We're going to talk about how she has morphed her thinking and her business to really understand what she's earning. I think this will be a really good conversation. Absolutely. So I'm going to drop off here. I'll see you guys on the back side of the show. Uh, have a great interview with uh, with our guests. I will. Thank you. Um, we have a lot of get great guests on Note School TV. Uh, I think you guys are going to be particularly impressed today because I know how impressed Joe and I are every time we get to talk to this lady. Uh, and we are honored to have had her on, in our Note School body for a while. 
but she just continues to shine and show us things and, you know, helps. She teaches the teachers. And I really do mean that. So you guys welcome from far west Texas, Miss Monica Masters. Good morning. How are you doing, Monica? I'm doing wonderful. How about you? I'm good. One good. of the things that I think is very interesting about you is that you picked a lifestyle of where you wanted to live. And so tell us a little bit about that, because you were a cor corporate executive living in the big city. Yes. Yep. I uh, worked for Verizon for 38 years. I was senior finance manager there, um, worked most of my career there in the Dallas area, and then finished out my career there in Tulsa, Oklahoma. But you're from West Texas. But I'm from West Texas. And and it's family called. Town. And family called. It did. Uh, actually, Verizon offered an early out. So I was able to early retire, come back to my hometown. And uh, my dad lives with me. So, um, yeah, it's it's great. I'm glad to be back home. That's awesome. So in order to do that, Monica, you really had to pick an industry that said you could live anywhere. Yes. You could live in Canada. You could live in you could live in New York City. You could live in San Angelo, Texas or you could live wherever. Mm -hmm. And so you got introduced in this business. Actually, my attorney is the one that introduced you to note school. Absolutely. I had worked with Jeff before. And when he learned that I was retiring, he gave me some suggestions of what I need to do and how I need to use my retirement money. And notes was a part of that. All right. So we're going to have a fun time today because we're going to focus on really returns and reality, right? Uh, w w expecting the the right return and what is that? And Joe obviously opened this up and said these very wealthy family offices have lowered their return expectations, mm -hmm. right? And and now that's because they probably see some risk in the market and they're trying to dial in on it. Monica, let's start out with the simplest of the simple. Okay. Right. You, we have a little joke around note school that we say people get drunk on yield. Yeah. Right. You ever hear that saying before? Many times. And and and, and yield is country club bragging rights. In other words, people will spout out, I'm getting this kind of a yield. I'm getting this kind of a return. Mm -hmm. How often do you find out that they actually, without training, how often are they actually accurate? Uh, probably zero percent. <laughs> Well, it's, some, it, it, it's a it's something you have to learn, correct? It, yeah, and and I think you know, I mean, people are used to maybe like their four hundred one ks, you know, giving this a you know a four to six percent return or the eight percent return, but do they really know what's behind that return and how they're accomplishing that return? That's it. So let's do the simplest of math, Monica. Okay. If I have a hundred thousand dollars that I'm going to earn ten percent on in a year, 10% mm -hmm. yield, 10% mm -hmm. return. I'm going to get none of my principal back. I'm only going to get my interest. How much money am I going to make at the end of a year? 10,000. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's 10% of the principal that you invested. Exactly. Right. Notes aren't quite that way because the cool thing about notes is you get principal and interest back. Yes. You actually get your investment back along with your return. Right? That's correct. And so depending on how long the loan pays out is that what that is. So Monica, we're very impressed with the fact first of all you are a very savvy investor. You've been now investing in notes for several years. Yes. I'm very honored that you took your retirement and you pointed it at notes. And you've owned rental properties and you've had a stock portfolio in the past and you've had all these other things. Why did you pick notes and why did you target the kind of returns that you wanted to earn? So, you know, I mean, I, I invested in my 401k for 38 years. So and, you know, you look at those monthly statements and you, you just see you, you really don't see the growth there. How much money am I getting back? I did the rentals. Um because I just thought it was fun and it was the thing to do at the time. And I, I had good tenants, so I didn't really have some of the landlord issues, but but you still have issues in maintenance. 
Um, and then I was doing the fix and flips and, you know, just a small time fix and flipper, the, the return on that. I mean, some of it, you might make a little bit and then, um, yeah, or just break even. So for a small time fix and flipper, it just wasn't working for me. And then when Verizon offered me that early retirement, I knew I wanted to come back to San Angelo and I didn't want to do all that work. So when Jeff had introduced me to the notes, I thought, aha, this is it. You know, I can sit at my computer. I can invest my money. I can actually see what my returns are on a monthly basis. You know, so when I could actually see what I was getting back each month, I I just knew that this was the uh, investment avenue for me. Notes Notes are a higher yielding investment than rentals, correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very much so. So everybody wants to know, like, okay, what's your yield, Monica? What's your yield? What is your yield? You know what? So, you know, I mean, if we're just talking about yield, my yield on my notes is anywhere from uh, nine to 12, 13% on that. So, you know, yeah, yield is important, but I think it also depends on what your strategy is and what you want to accomplish. So for me, I early retired. I couldn't pull from my IRA yet. So I had to come up with an investment strategy that would replace my income. Mm. So it was not so much what my yield is going to be. And I didn't, you know, hang my hat on that, but how am I going to replace my income? So that's the type of notes I would look for. So you, like many note school members, left a good paying job. Yes. All of a sudden you have, you have some investable capital. Mm-hmm. You needed to find notes that had a good cash flow to them. Absolutely. So you probably started out buying shorter term notes. Well, actually, cause I was still working. I mm-hmm. was buying the long-term notes. So okay. because I was thinking, well. yeah, because I was thinking that I was going to work for another, you know, six, seven, eight years before I would retire. But when they offered, and so I started out buying long-term notes and then I sold some partials on those long-term notes. When I retired, then I thought, okay, I've got to change things. And so I needed to accelerate my cash flow to increase my monthly income. So my strategy changed when I retired. So you started out with a wealth model. You would buy a long-term note. My hands represent that payment stream Mm -hmm. over time, right? Correct. You buy a long-term note and then you would sell the first half of that note, so to speak. Yes. Having very little invested in the back half of the note. Yes. Now, now your return on that was out of sight. Yes, it is. <laughs> so you might have had a thousand or two thousand dollars invested that was going to return back over a hundred grand over time. That is correct. You don't need a calculator for that one, do you? No, you sure don't. <laughs> so then what I would do with that money after I sold the partial is just reinvest and buy another note. So it's kind of like a rinse and repeat system that you can do. Yeah. So you so that that's a great wealth strategy. The, yes. our, our note strategy on partials, we've perfected that. I, I think better than anybody else, Monica. I would agree. And, yes. And we've and we've taught this excessively. Uh, and so anybody that's been inside a note school has seen the partial and seen this this magic model that you're mm-hmm. describing where you yes. where you buy the note, then you sell the front part of the note and recapitalize, get most of your money back, mm-hmm. have a little bit of money invested that's going to be a payday forever. And then, you, as you said, then you all of a sudden, but you needed mailbox money like now yes. because you left your job. And so exactly. then you started repositioning that. Monica, we've seen this. You and I've seen this a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, like people, almost every person has kind of a number in their head. Yes, they do. I want this kind of a return, right? I want a 10% yield. I want a 9% yield. I want a 14% yield. Like you've seen this a lot. Mm-hmm. What have you noticed about that when people have like they start out with a yield number? Well, I, I think they've um, they've heard other people say it, you know, so they you know that they think that's a good yield. So they're kind of mimicking what other people are are earning or think they're country, earning. country club bragging rights. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but when you say, well, what is what does that really mean? And, and you know, what is a 10 percent? What How much uh, cash is going to? 
cash flow is that? You know, what are you actually getting each month on that 10% yield? You know, so when you when you start looking at the yield and then you start using, and I, I'll call it your legendary cash flow calculator spreadsheet. And you know, that, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what we use. Uh, you know, that way you can see how much interest income that you're getting, how much of your principal you're getting back. You can see how much uh, is being returned year by year, month by month. Yep. on that. So you can really see within a certain amount of years, you're going to get all of your investment back in a short time frame. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's really, imp that's why I built those, those Excel tools, exactly. right? Because yes. I, I would ask somebody, okay, you want a 10% return, how much money are you going to make? And they'd be like, uh, I don't know. Right. And so we figured out that to the, the bank, the, the bank, and their deposit slip doesn't ask you your yield, do they? No, they don't. <laughs> they just want to know how much you're going to, they want to know how much profit you're going to deposit, right? Exactly. Yes. And so uh, you've really, you've, your, your last name is Masters, but you've really mastered that well, <laughs> right? I'm trying to, yeah. Well deserving of your name. Right? <laughs> so, so I wanted to talk about that, like, like, now that you have you've been a wealth investor and your cash flow investor, mm -hmm. help us understand what that is. Amor, we've defined it. You you at the end of the day, you've made between nine and 13 percent yield. Mm -hmm. Right. And 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 you're mature enough as an investor. You don't fall over the sword and say, I always have to get 10 percent or always have to get 12 percent. Right. Because sometimes you'll invest at a little lower yield to get the grade of the note you're looking for. Exactly. And you've looked at the math and you said, this note's available at nine and it's a really good one. And the market won't let me buy it at 10. True. And now with these tools, you can actually see the income variance. And what have you seen? Well, that um, going from a 9% yield to a 10%, I mean, your cash flow is not that much difference, you know, so I think having a strict number for your yield, you're going to miss out on a lot of good quality notes that are going to bring you in the cash flow. So, you know, I, I, I look at yield, but it's not the first thing I look at. I want to run those numbers and I want to see what that income is going to be because for my personal strategy is that monthly income. So is it going to bring me the monthly income that I need? Ladies and gentlemen, that is what a mature note investor says. There it's, you ask my wife, Martha, who's mastered this partial more than anybody. You ask any sophisticated note investor, Monica, that you and I know, and they say that, people start out with yield because they're repeating, as you said, what somebody else said. Mm -hmm. And what we've started focusing on is, is what is, how much profit, how many dollars in profit are you going to make? We right. don't mean that we don't look at the yield, right? but, but it yield does not become, we're not blinded by the yield. Right. And, and you and I see people uh, on the deal lab, in our weekly deal lab that we have where we take mm -hmm. performing notes that we're with it, we've gone out in the marketplace and found and that we, we, you, we do these exercises on our deal lab and you've seen people change their mind over and over and over that, you know what, I could live with that 9% yield because it's exactly. going to make me this much money. And I didn't even know how much money that was. Exactly. Do you find that Monica people uh, that they're making more money than they thought? Oh, absolutely. And especially in the note business, you know, I mean, everything that I've tried and everything that I've done, I've not seen the consistent returns that you do with notes. So you've got stock markets that's going up and down and you don't know from one day to the next where your money's going to be. You have consistent yield and returns every month with the note and you can see that coming in each month. So I love it that uh, when there is a deposit made into my account, I get a little email and I just open it up and I say, thank you and delete yeah. the email. You know, I mean, it's so great to get that feeling that you know that that income's coming in. But the stock market, you just, you, it's too volatile. All right. So, Monica, where do you own notes? Where, where, where are the properties located? Ohio, Delaware, Texas, um, Georgia, Louisiana. So I, I'm pretty spread out. 
Michigan. You, you live way out in West Texas. You know, you might not even not own a note in West Texas, right? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> so one of the things is, you know, I wanted to talk about that because re returns are are relevant to risk, right? Yes. There, there, there's risk based investing, right? Or, 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 you know, for your risk, you're you're getting paid a little more. And so let's talk about that. How do you decide where your risk tolerance is? Because it's going to line up with your yield. Yes. Right. Hi, right. Let's talk about that. OK, so, um, you know, I, I guess for me is that uh, when I first started, you know, I, I was afraid that I'm investing this much money and, you know, what happens if it defaults or forecloses and things like that. But uh, but what you learn is that like the discount on the note gives you that buffer and yeah. that I, I've had like, several notes that uh, paid off early when I first got started. And I thought, well, gosh, I didn't hold them long enough to even collect the interest. But because you, I purchased them at that discount, I still made twelve or $13,000 in that first year. So that made your yield go up. Exactly. You know, so my yield, what I was thinking I was going to get was around the nine to 10 percent. Actually, my yield was in the 25, 27 percent on because those. That paid we're in the discount note buying business. Exactly. That discount has a has a bonus yield in it. Yes, it does. And and it's just life. It's just going to happen. You didn't accelerate any of these notes to pay off early. Yeah. They just did. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's a really cool thing that people learn about the discount note business. And it's pretty much unique to, to notes, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. I, I wanted to talk about the cushion factor for a minute. Can I use okay. my hands? Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. I have a piece of property that is worth $200,000. If I buy a rental, how much am I going to invest for that property? 200 grand, right? Exactly. But if I buy a note, I may only invest $120,000 secured by a $200,000 house. And that's what you right. referred to as that cushion factor. Cushion, right? yes. And so people say, is our notes riskier than rentals? And I would say 100% no. No. Mm -mm. The risk is lower in notes, although the return is higher in notes. Yes. And it is, that because, is, that is true. because of a couple of things that we've just mm -hmm. said. One thing that you pointed out was you're buying a note at a discount mm -hmm. and, you, and you're buying a note for far less than what the property is worth. That's that, okay. that's that risk cushion factor. Mm -hmm. And then we said that notes pay off early, which gives you, you earn that discount quicker than your calculator said you were going to earn it, which pops up and makes your yield bigger than you thought. Correct. Yes. Man, that's like magic. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it, it's, and it's, and until you can analyze that note and kind of see what happens, it, it's unbelievable of your return until you actually see it and put that analysis to it. And that's what I learned through note school is how to analyze that. You are now a, a veteran with note school. You've been with us how long? Five years. Five years. Okay. So you're a veteran uh, and you've seen you've seen a lot of people morph since you became a member. We have special events where you get to go hang out with all the mm -hmm. other people. We have meetings every week where you get to know the people, but right. we have special events. Take us through a journey of how somebody starts out thinking and then what they learn. Well, I think, you know, we started out earlier that, you know, you're thinking you want to earn a, a certain yield yes, and, yes. Um, you know, then and, and I think um, you don't know what strategy you're doing. So for, for me, I had to and I try to, you know, even when I talk to, you know, some other investors is, you know, really trying to define what your goal is. What do you want to accomplish? So it's not just a yield and yeah, we all want to make money and big profits and stuff, but what are you really trying to accomplish? So are you trying me, to replace your salary or are you trying to grow long-term wealth? Exactly. Right? Exactly. So once you do that, then you're narrowing your focus and you're shooting toward that goal. So that's, you know, I think that's important to do that. 
And that way you kind of stay on track of what you're doing. Once you do that, then you kind of start thinking about, well, okay, what's going to help me accomplish that? Is it a long-term note? Is it a short-term note? Do I want to sell partials on a long-term note? You know, uh, I have friends that want to invest, family that want to invest. Can I use their money to buy notes? So you start looking at those different avenues and creating that strategy. So for me, I had to really narrow it down. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with notes. Just, you know, I mean, there's just so much that you can do, but kind of narrowed it down for me to where I stayed focused and to achieve my monthly income goal. Well, I think that's a great point. Um, you, you, you buy these notes and you, if you buy a shorter term note, mm -hmm. let's just say it's going to fully pay out in eight years. And we see those notes, right? Mm -hmm. Listen, you got all of your investment back in eight years in the stock market. When do you get your investment back? Oh my gosh. When you sell it with a rent house, when do you get your investment back? You have to sell it in order to get your money back. Exactly. Yes. Right. With notes, you get your investment back plus your return. Right. And then, you know, obviously for you, you're plunking. Once you get your investment money back, you're plunking it out into another note. Right. Exactly. Yes. So yep. you're you're putting your you're putting a hook in the water all the time. You know, when the loan pays off. You don't go, oh, my God. You go, oh, my God, I made extra profit. And now I get to go buy another one and do it again. Yeah, exactly. So, so you're you're right. At first, it was just like this fear that, oh, my gosh, it paid off early. I'm not going to get anything. But now when I get uh, a notification from the servicer that they're asking for a payoff and I'm going, oh, yippee, because I know that my uh, investment is just going to double. Yeah. My return is going to double. Yeah. Monica, I want to I want to circle back to something because I don't want to leave this this conversation without saying you can run a calculator really well. OK. Mm -hmm. And so, you know how to run a financial. We teach that in note school and yes. how to run a financial calculator and how to use the spreadsheets that calculate the yields and returns and dollar profit and all those things. But what you've kind of shown us today is that's part of the mechanics in doing the business. Yes. But the smarts in doing the business is how to be a wise investor and how not to 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 stifle yourself by being so hung up on return that you miss the real opportunity. Absolutely. So 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 I want you to expand a little bit, if you will, like just the journey, like how long did it take you to figure that out? I, w I would say probably a year, you know, because, you know, once I went through the note school training and I started narrowing down, you know, what I wanted to. And you were immediately buying notes, right? It wasn't that you weren't buying notes. No. So, I mean, I joined and, and, and it was probably three months before I bought my first note, but I wanted to buy my first note. I wanted to see the process. It was quick and fun. So I bought three more. You know, and at the time I, I had my retirement income that uh, that I could invest in the notes. So in the first year, I was able to buy 11 notes in that first year. Good so, you. I, you know, I mean, it's when you become more confident once you buy that first note. And I always tell everyone, I said, you, you got to buy the first note. And then once you kind of get over that and you see how it's working and then I was comparing that to because I still had money in the stock market. So I was comparing those returns to what my stock market uh, portfolio was doing. And of course, the notes just. Now, it's really speaking. easy to look at those statements on the stock market and know exactly where you are, right? <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> I had to do uh, do some digging to find that out. <laughs> And then after you see all the fees that you pay, then you realize you're not making so much money after all in there. It, it could appear that it's a little bit design confusion, right? Yes, it is. And they, they show lots of graphs and numbers and pie charts and everything else. And you still going, mm, OK, I, th I think I'm doing good. <laughs> but with the notes, you know, you know, for sure. It's 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 easy math, isn't it? It's it's very easy math, and the yeah. tools that um, you guys have prepared for us to use, and um, yeah. like I say, I call it the legendary cash flow calculator. I mean, I yeah. do that on every note that I I purchase, and and I think you can play around with the the spreadsheets to define what strategy you want, because at first you're not going to know that, but you'll learn it through through the note school. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt. We, we yeah. have, we've kind of figured out after 20 something years of training that if we could simplify the math and show people yes. what they're really making, that's what they wanted to see. And it made it clear. And by the way, you could go compare other investments with some of those same calculators and start yes. realizing, oh, wait a minute, this rent house made this much money and this note made this much money every month. And literally almost every time that's about how the math works. Yes. And so, uh, so people started really drawing a clarity to it and stuff. Yes. Monica, you are, this has really been fun. Uh, I just, I just have enjoyed so much. You're, you're, they say when you really understand something, you can make it simple. Yes. You've made return simple for us today. Well, thank you. Glad I could do that. So. Well, let's bring the old man back in. Okay. Uh, that's right. The old man, Monica, you said something uh, uh, when we started, when you and Eddie started and it kind of made me, it kind of made me chuckle here in the background. You said, you know, I bought my rentals and I thought those were fun. <laughs> <laughs> most people, most people that are telling us about rentals are not using the word fun. I'm not, no, that's no. True, Monica. but then when she, she got to waiting to get that, that, that wire transfer into her account every month, then she thought that was really fun. Yeah. So uh, well, it is. And you know, I mean, you do so such little work. I mean, I just sit at my computer and I'll look at those investments. I'll look at notes, buy notes. And I think keeping that money churning, Within your accounts, to me, that's fun. So, what and, a know, job. It's, all, it's all you, right? It's yeah. you're not depending on anybody else. Exactly. What's happening in whether it rains somewhere else in the stock, your stock, whatever it is, right? It just depends on that little house in Louisiana or Arkansas yeah. or wherever it is, right? So, yeah, Monica, I, I have found that I meet a lot of people that have had rental properties, other investments, other kinds of real estate. And there's an old saying, when, it, when, when I grow up as an investor, I want to be a note guy, right? Yeah. And I think that you have exemplified today for you why that's been a truth. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Very much so. All right, Monica, All right. thank you. You're awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Monica. Thank you for having me on. All, right. All righty. So guys, there you have it. Direct from San Angelo, Texas, Miss Monica Masters. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what we talk about. That's what, that's what we, uh, that's what we live every week. And uh, absolutely, you can do the same thing too. So we'd love to have you join us, excuse me, at Note School and uh, noteschool.com forward slash TV. Just uh, check in with us and we'd love to hear from you. So, well, um, you guys have a great week and we will see you next time on Note School TV, 1105 on Wednesday, Central Time. See you then.